Hi, I'm Natalie Rhodes, and this is Into Math's 5th grade, Module 17, Lesson 1. I'm going to start off by going over the I can objective. It says, I can use patterns to place the decimal point in a quotient. And the learning objective is to find patterns and quotients when dividing by powers of 10. The prior learning is that students explain division by using equations, rectangular arrays, and area models. Students divided using strategies based on place value, the properties of operations, and the relationship between multiplication and division. All right, so moving into lesson one, we're on page 419. It says, spark your learning. Jada is playing a sorting game with a deck of math cards. Each card has an expression on one side, and she lays out 10 of the cards. So we need to sort the expressions on the card in the boxes below. So if the answer is going to be less than 1, we're going to put it in the first box. If it's going to be between 1 and 10, it's going to be in the second box. And if it's going to be bigger than 10, then it needs to be in that third box. So let's go ahead and look at the first card. It says 752 divided by 100. Well, I know that 700 is bigger than 100, so it's definitely be, going to be more than 1. But it's not big enough to be bigger than 10 because they're the same amount of digits. 752 has three digits and 100 has three digits. So that means it's going to be between 1 and 10. It's going to be about 7.5. So then we would put our... 752 divided by 100 in this middle box. And I'm just going to go ahead and check it off that we did that one. All right, now we have 936 divided by 1,000. 936 is smaller than 1,000. So if I take a number and I divide it by something bigger than it is, that means it's going to be less than 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put 936 divided by a thousand in this box and check that off. Now we have 0.842 and we're going to multiply it by 10 to the second power. So when it says 10 to the second power, that just means that it has two zeros, which means we are going to be multiplying it by 100. So if I have 0 0.842, that means that with those two zeros, I get to multiply that decimal and make it larger, which means I get to move that decimal over to the right two times. So it would be between, or I'm, I'm actually going to redo that just because that was a little sloppy. So it's going to go on the other side of the eight and then the other side of the four. So it is going to be 84.2, which is definitely bigger than 10. So I'm going to put that 0 0.842 times that 10 to the second over in the greater than the 10 box. All right, now I have 842 divided by 10. Again, I have 800 divided by 10. Definitely gonna be bigger than 10 because I have three digits being divided by two digits. All right, now I have 0 0.936 times 10. So again, I only have one zero in that times 10, which means I'm just going to move that decimal place over one, which means it would be 9.36, not quite 10. So that 0 0.936 times 10 is going to go in between one and 10 because it would be 9.36. All right, so now we have 93.6 divided by 10 to the second. So if I have 10 to the second, that means I have two zeros, which means it is going to be 100. And if I have two zeros and I'm dividing, that means I'm going the opposite way with the decimal point, which means I'm going to move the decimal point to be smaller. Also, you can just look at this as 93 or even 94. I'm taking 94 and I'm dividing it by 100. You can automatically know that if I'm taking something smaller and dividing it by something bigger, it's going to be less than 1. But I do want to show you what we would do with that decimal point. So if we're dividing, we would move the decimal point the opposite way two times because we have two zeros. So it would end up being a decimal, which is going to be less than 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put that 93.6 divided by 10 to the second in that less than one box. All right, now I have 84.2 divided by 10 to the second. Again, we're gonna have 100 here. So I'm saying I have 84-ish, 84 divided by 100. 
I have a smaller number being divided by 100, so it is going to be less than 1. If we were moving the decimals, we would move it twice again, and we would have 0.8, which is less than 1. So right here, I'm going to have my 84.2, and I'm going to divide it by 10 to the second. All right, now I have 7,520 divided by 10 to the second. Again, 10 to the second is going to be 100. So I have 7,000 being divided by 100. That's definitely going to be bigger than 10 because I have four numbers being divided by three numbers. So that number is going to be much bigger than 10. So I'm going to go ahead and put my 7,520 divided by 10 to the second in that bigger box. All right, now I have 0 0.752 times 10 to the third. So if I have that three exponent, that means I have three zeros. So it's actually gonna be a thousand here, which means that I can move my decimal point three times to make it bigger. So I can move on the other side of the seven, other side of the five, and the other side of the two, which means I'm gonna have 752 as my final answer, which again is much bigger than 10. So we would go ahead and put 0 0.752 times 10 to the third in that bigger than 10 box. All right, last one is 842 divided by 10 to the third. So if I'm dividing by 10 to the third, that again is going to be a thousand, those three zeros. And just by looking at it, I have 800 divided by a thousand. Something smaller being divided by something bigger is going to give me something less than one. If I was working with the decimal again, remember if there is no decimal, it's at the end of the number hiding, just like it would say 842.0, same number. So if you don't see a decimal, it's always at the end of the number. So then I can move it to be smaller three times because I'm dividing, so it would be 0.842, which is less than one. So we're gonna go ahead and put our 842 divided by 10 to the third in our less than one box. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page here. Now we're on page 420. So number one says, the factory making the math cards ships a box with decks of cards to a warehouse. How much does each deck of card weigh? So right here, it shows us that there are 100 decks in this box and that the weight of the total box is 275 pounds. So for A, how can you determine the weight of one deck of cards? If you know the total weight and you know how many cards are in there, you can create a problem to figure out just one deck of card and the weight for that. For B, dividing by a thousand is the same as multiplying by what fraction? So if you divide by a thousand and you wanted to multiply by a fraction, what very small fraction would you be multiplying that would be the exact same as dividing by a thousand? And then see what is the decimal equivalent of one over a thousand, hint, hint for the previous one. So what's the decimal equivalent for one over a thousand? Think about the amount of zeros, the amount of places away from the decimal point. See if you can try and get that one. Then for D, it wants you to complete the pattern. So what's 275 times 1, then by 1 tenth, then by 1 hundredth, then by 1 thousandth. So just be careful where you're placing the decimal point in that 275. Okay, and then write a pattern for dividing 275 by 1, by 10, by 100, and by 1,000. So you're setting up your own pattern just like in D. So you would write 275 divided by 1, just like how the first one in D says 275 times 1. So you're just, honestly, you're writing the exact same problems, but you're changing the multiplication sign to a division sign, and then instead of your decimal points, you're writing your powers of 10 that it gives you. And then write what they equal. For F, what can you conclude about the relationship between the patterns in D and E? So look at what the answers are in those two problems and see if you can find a pattern. And then for G, we're actually finding our final answer of how much does one deck of cards weigh, and that'll be the last problem that you're solving um, in both D and E. So they should be the same. All right, go ahead and try these problems as best as you can. Give it your best effort and then come back and we will solve this together. Go ahead and hit pause here. 
All right, great. Let's go ahead and solve these together. So if I was looking for one deck of card for the weight of that, I would say I need to take my total weight and I need to divide it by how many decks of cards I have. So if I have 275 pounds, I need to take my 275 and I need to divide it by the total amount of decks that I have, which is a thousand. Now, dividing by a thousand, and you see how the previous or the next problem kind of gives you the answer to the previous problem. So now dividing by a thousand is the same as multiplying by what fraction? If you look and see, the fraction is right there. So it's the same as multiplying by one over a thousand. Now, what is the decimal equivalent to the fraction that we just found? Well, I see that a thousand has three zeros, which means I need the, my one to be three decimal points away from a thousand. So I'm going to have zero, zero, one as my decimal equivalent. Three zeros means three places away from the decimal point. All right, so for D, we're just going to be solving these. So 275 times one I know is going to be 275. And I'm just going to go ahead and actually write 275 over and over and over again because I know those are the three numbers that we're going to be dealing with. It's just going to be the decimal point that's going to be changing. All right, so for 275 times 0.1, I see that I have one number behind the decimal, which means I need one number behind the decimal. So my decimal is going to go right there. In 0 0.1, I have two numbers behind the decimal, which means I need two numbers behind the decimal, so my decimal is now jumping to be 2.75. Then I have three numbers behind the decimal with this, which means I need three numbers behind my decimal, which means it's now growing to be 0.275. So you see how the decimal place just moves each time the decimal point moves, oh, I'm sorry, from the one that moves away from the decimal point. So the smaller my decimal that I'm multiplying by, the smaller my answer becomes. So if I'm multiplying by 0.1, it goes from 275 to 27.5, because tenth smaller. And then 0 0.01 I just went from 10th to 100th, so I got 10 times smaller, which means my answer needs to get 10 times smaller. So it's going from 27.5 to 2.75. It's always a 10th smaller because my decimal point and my decimal value is getting a 10th smaller as well. So now what happens when I divide by whole numbers and powers of 10? So I'm going to go ahead and write my 275 divided by... four times. So I'm going to divide by one, then I'm going to divide by 10, then I'm going to divide by 100, then I'm going to divide by 1000. All right, if I have 275 divided by one, it's just going to be 275. Now, if I have 275 divided by 10, I am taking away a place value. I'm dividing by 10, so that means I'm moving my imaginary decimal one place to make the number smaller. So I am going to have 27.5. And if you look, it's the same thing as above. And hopefully you notice that those answers are going to match up. So now if I'm dividing by 100, that means I'm taking my imaginary decimal place at the end, and I'm going to move it two times in, which means it's going to be 2.75. And then if I divide by a thousand, three zeros, three decimal movements, so it's going to be 0.275. So if you see, the answers are the same, which means for F, can you find the relationship between multiplying by a decimal and dividing by a power of 10? They're the same. So then for our final answer, how much does each deck of cards weigh? Well, that would be our final answer of 0.275 pounds for each deck of cards. All right, that is it for this lesson. Go ahead and finish up the rest of your problems, and I'll see you back for lesson two.